Good evening, Dr. Reed. How does it feel to be this evening's centerpiece? Figuratively. It's quite unsettling. As a doctor, I am more used to being the observer than the subject observed. Do not be alarmed. The Ascalon Club has a tried and tested policy for choosing its initiates. May I ask who you are, sir? Why would you be interested? Well, as you seem to be the only man in the room with a beating heart, you draw quite a bit of attention yourself. Ah. Vampire senses never cease to fascinate me. They dwarf those of mere mortals. I am Aloysius Dawson, by the way. Are you a member of the club? Yes, I am. And I have been for many years. And will be until the day I die. What can you tell me about it? It's not really my place to give you such information. I am merely a mortal member. And a dying one at that. Are you sick? Personally. I consider my advancing years are a sickness in itself. My body is slowly abandoning me, Dr. Reed. Are you not afraid? You are surrounded by vampires. Sir, it's for that very reason that I joined the club in the first place. Is not the nature of this club a secret shared by only a privileged few? My dear Dr. Reed, I have spent years and a fortune precisely to gather that kind of information. So you asked for membership? I have been a member of many clubs in many countries. But I must admit, this one is my favorite. What can you tell me about Lord Redgrave? I would not dare speak of our chairman without his consent. This is an Mr. Dawson. Of Dawson and Dawson. The wealthiest man in England. It is a pleasure to meet such a prominent figure of London. A withering London figurehead, to be precise. Are you sick, Mr. Dawson? I am a doctor, you know. My case is beyond the scope of traditional medicine. I have spent fortunes on the world's most competent doctors to arrive at that diagnostic conclusion. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Should I suppose that you're here in search of some form of immortality? Absolutely not. I'm here to implement my plan to save the city I was born in. To cast out the ghastly evil that has us all on our knees. What do you know about the Guard of Prewen? I should not say this, but I admire their commitment. This is what the nation needs right now. But they are our enemies. They are not mine, Dr. Reed. Would you help them? No. There is a time for such methods. But brute force will not be enough to fight this plague. We have to think differently. What is the situation like in this part of town? I am sure Lord Redgrave will enlighten you more effectively than I. Money cannot solve every problem. This mysterious epidemic is going to require more than money can buy. You're right. Money is nothing unless one has the will to wield it. I have a plan, sir. A radical one that will save all that is essential in London. What is your plan, then? Quarantine and barricades are futile. What we need is a wall. A formidable, unscalable wall to isolate the deserving from the infected masses. But that would segregate the rich from the poor, would it not? It would be unjust. Our only course of action must be to save England. And to save England, we have to make sacrifices. Are you not mistaking sacrifice for summary execution? Why do you care? Are you not a vampire? Removed from all mortal concerns? Decisiveness is what the city needs, and it needs it now.
Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. I think Lord Redgrave just suggested I was sired by an ancient vampire. Is anyone there? Jonathan, is that you? I did not know you were back in London. Oh, my dear Johnny, I am so sorry for your loss. Mary was such a sweetheart. Thank you, Venus. May I come in? I was going to bed, actually. I'm sure you can spare me a few minutes. For old time's sake. Of course you may enter, Jonathan. But you are always welcome here. It's a pleasure to see you again, Venus. So you returned from the war in one piece, too. Thank God. My Clarence is back home, too. How is the old rascal? Probably outside, chasing ghosts and chimeras. Clarence has changed a lot since he returned from the war, you know. How have you been since the last time we met? How long has it been? Three years now? I've done my duty. Like all British women. You have no idea what it was like to wait for months without knowing if I'd still be a wife or a widow. I understand. Luckily, this part of town has been saved from the worst of the bombings, from what I've seen. Yes, and it's also true about the epidemic. The flu has killed here too, of course, but not on such a large scale as in other parts of town.
people. Have you noticed anything peculiar about the neighborhood recently? You mean except for your return to town? No. Oh, and again, Jonathan, please accept my condolences for your sister. Thank you, Venus. It was so sudden. And I've been so busy, I haven't spoken to anyone about it. I wish I could have assisted at the funeral, but, you know, it's been so quick. And what with the epidemic in the streets? There's no need to apologize, my dear. It's normal, considering the circumstances. No, it's not. I am sure that Clarence has not even thought to present you his condolences. He is too busy with his penny dreadful stories. Why is my return so surprising? It's more an unexpected happy end than a surprise. You and Clarence, back from the war. You have no idea how hard it's been for me. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? The McPhersons. I heard they locked themselves in their own house. They could just be afraid of getting sick. Perhaps you're right. But if I were you, I'd pay them a visit. A big house reachable through a courtyard to the north of the railway bridge. Goodbye for now. I remember when Mary came here with... What do you... I remember when Mary came here with her husband and her son. They were such a... It's locked. Good evening, sir. May I have your attention, please? Come on, Johnny. Don't you recognize your oldest friend? Clarence. Clarence Crossley. How are you? My God. So you survived the war, too. So sorry I didn't recognize you at first. I almost didn't recognize you, either. War does that to men, I heard. In my case, it was true, for... I've witnessed the horror that lies underneath. When did you escape the war and return to London? You know what's funny? I almost never think about the war. Not anymore. I'm involved in another kind of battle now. I know what you mean. I haven't had much time to think about the war either since my return. Of course. With the epidemic, I bet you've been busy as well. Forgive me, Johnny. I, I didn't want to sound selfish. What is this new battle? Well, I saw terrible things during the war. Horrors I thought I'd forget. They're here too. They're everywhere. Vampires.
I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Can you help me? Infection is everywhere these days. But if you ever go to the park near that swanky house belonging to the, the Malanies. Yes? What about the Malanies? What about their house? Not enough noise for a big family with children. Not enough movement. Closed doors. What is going on in there? How is your wife, Venus? We've spent so much time away from each other. And so many things have happened. But you're alive. You returned in one piece and you have a family. How many soldiers can say the same? Believe me, it's not quite that simple. Unlike you, I'm not the man I used to be. Is everything all right at home? Surely Venus was relieved to see you return from France in one piece. Have you forgot what people are like in this part of town, Johnny? Venus fears for our family reputation. Now her husband has become the village idiot. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Good evening, miss. Oh my god, no. Please, Mr. Vampire, don't kill me. Please, no. I'm too young to die. I still have so much to offer this world. Wait, no. Why do you think I would... What? Don't worry, Dr. Reed. I know you wouldn't harm me. Mother told me you were in this part of town and might drop by. Your mother? My name is Charlotte, sir. Charlotte Ashbury. My mother taught me long ago how to recognize the signs that betray a vampire. I understand she also taught you how to tease and gently mock innocent young Ekons. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Charlotte. What do you think about this part of town? I was raised here and I suppose it feels like home. You grew up in this part of town too, did you not? Yes, I was born a few streets away. A small world, is it not? Did you ever imagine that my mother was your neighbor all that time? That you could have met her in a dark alley at night? You won't trick me twice, young lady. We both know Lady Ashbury never hunts or attacks prey at random. Come on, Doctor. Don't tell me you never thought about that possibility. Her fangs on your neck. Oh, are you blushing, Dr. Reed? Is there something that's bothering you? Too much selfishness and individualism for my taste. Even when there was no epidemic. Even if that's partly true, may I remind you that many charitable institutions are financed by the selfish and filthy rich. I suppose you're right. But society must reform and renew itself or we are all done for. Tell me about your adoption. What do you want to know? Who are your real parents? Elizabeth Ashbury is my real mother. She raised me and has taken care of me all my life. I have no idea who my progenitors are or were. Do you live with her? I still spend a lot of time in my mother's mansion. But I have my own house now. I have a life to live, you see. And one day... I'll have my death to face. How did you meet Lady Ashbury? First, I was an orphan in the institution for girls she manages in the West End. When I was ten, she adopted me. And I have lived with her ever since. Did you know she was a vampire when she picked you? The correct word is Ekon, Doctor. And no, I had no idea why my mother only showed up at night. She told me everything when I turned 16, though I suspected the truth for a long time before that.
what are you doing out here? You mean, what do I do outside at night, since I am a woman? Let me ask you a question, sir. Would you ask the same question of a man? Actually, yes. I ask the same question to everyone who dares to go outside at night, considering the risks. Well, if you must know, I campaign for the right to vote for all women. Why should I wait to the age of 30 years when men can vote at 21? Are you a suffragette, then? Oh, you really are, Elizabeth's girl. Without a doubt. All adult women have the right to vote in the US, in New Zealand, and in Australia. But women here can't vote unless they are property owners. No need to convince me, Miss Charlotte. I have shared your opinion for a long time, even before I met Emmeline Pankhurst. Really? Oh, now I see why my mother appreciates you so much. Too bad there aren't more men like you in the vicinity. How are the locals reacting to your claims? People here can't wait for a wall to be built to isolate the West End from the rest of town. That's how progressive they are. If this happens, Emily and I will blow it up. Explosives are very dangerous, young lady. And who is this Emily? She is my best friend, and a suffragette too. She was supposed to campaign with me tonight, but hasn't turned up. Have you any reason to be worried about her? Recently, Emily started to believe in... Well, she got interested in vampires. I'm afraid she might be in trouble. Let me guess. You spoke to her about us, didn't you? Despite your mother's warning, I think I should try to find your friend. Oh, that would be top-notch. I can tell you where she might have gone. You have my thanks, Dr. Reed. And please, don't tell my mother. What exactly has your mother told you about me? Your name and profession, obviously. And the mystery about your maker. I'm sorry to hear about what happened to your sister, sir. Mother says it was not your fault. Does it not scare you to know what I am? What your mother is. Why should it? My mother is the most compassionate woman. Must I be wary of her, Dr. Reed? Or you? Of course not. You have nothing to fear from me. Or your mother. Good to know. And don't worry, my mother told me everything I need to know about vampire tricks. Their nature as well as features. Your mother is not like any other vampire I've met. I believe she thinks the same about you, Dr. Reed. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? A few days ago, I spotted a strange house while campaigning for women's suffrage. Awful smell. No answer when I knocked. Where is it? It's the Mullaney's. A nice family who live in a big house near the park in the eastern part of this neighborhood. Do you know why Lady Asprey chose you to become her daughter? No, I don't. Each time I ask her that question, she smiles and says it's precisely because I dare to ask such questions. Do you ever regret that she chose you? Of course not. Though I often wonder if she adopted others before me. If so, where are they buried? How was it for them to pass through life with a never-aging mother? Your mother has refused to turn you into a vampire. Tell me more about it. Each time we argue, Mother expresses the same fear. She wants me to remain alive and full of joy, rather than become melancholy and immortal. She claims you can't have one without the other. It's pure selfishness. It's your mother's choice. As daughters and sons, we have to accept the decisions our parents make for us, despite our own wishes. I love my mother, and have accepted everything from her. Even that she named me Charlotte, when it was not my original name. Does it bother you? No. Whoever I was when I was born, I am now Charlotte Ashbury. It hurts as much as it makes me proud to know that's the name my mother will read on my tombstone. 
Your mother has walked this earth for much longer than you or I. She is wise, and we should not ignore her advice when we disagree with it. But why shouldn't I be allowed to forge my own experience? There can't be only one righteous way to deal with eternity. Why do you still hope to become a vampire in spite of your mother's refusal? It's the immortal aspect of vampires that interests me. The world won't improve unless women take charge. I'm convinced of that. You're obviously a clever woman with a good education and a brilliant future. But have you thought about the price you'd have to pay? The loneliness? The necessary masquerade? Is it not true of every high position? To change this world and make it a better place, one needs time on one's side. Tell me, Charlotte, how do you plan to achieve eternal life, since you've obviously given it a lot of thought? I won't give up. You have no idea how determined I am, sir. I may contract a deadly disease. I may throw myself under a carriage just to be saved by her sweet kiss. That's a disturbing answer, young lady. And the worst part of it is, I know you speak the truth. There are less dangerous ways, Doctor. Instead of throwing myself under a horse like Emily Davison, I could just throw myself into your arms. Never. That would be betraying your mother's trust. She would never forgive us. For sure. But look on the bright side. We would have eternity to reconcile. Or an eternity to run away from your mother's mighty wrath. Quite a terrifying idea, don't you think? Yes. I think it's wiser to let go of that part of the plan. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. Why are vampire hunters sniffing around here? I need to find out what they're up.
This woman's body has multiple lacerations. They're deep, too. Whoever did this was driven by rage. He had his tongue removed and his eyes gouged out. He was a victim of brutal torture. This one's neck is broken. He was young, probably the son. your family. They mocked my talent! in the disease's evolution? So, this girl took lessons at the famous Doris Fletcher acting school. 